Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the uh, Liberty Mower Clinic YouTube channel. Uh, I did a uh, introductory video when I first started this channel. And then I also uploaded some other videos on this, uh, uh, this machine after that. Uh, when I did the introductory video, I uh, tried to do like a quick overview of all of my equipment and then I, uh, I had planned on doing some more feature videos, uh, a little bit more up, de uh, up close and in depth on all of my machines. And so, uh, so the other videos, I actually have a, uh, an older YouTube channel, uh, that I have just general content on. And, uh, and I actually uploaded the, those videos of this machine on that. And, uh, but then I started up this channel that's solely for uh, lawn mowers and small engines and stuff like that and so I tried to move those over so if you guys don't understand those videos um, I apologize but uh, <clears throat> hopefully if you go back and watch those those other videos it'll help to explain this machine a little bit more um, and I would encourage you to to go back and watch those um, <clears throat> so uh, here in a minute also the reason why I've got these two sitting over here is I'm going to be shooting another video on those. And so I'll explain more on those um, in that video. What it is, is uh, in my introductory video, I talked about uh, I've got two riding mowers now. Originally had that one and then was recently given this one. And uh, between the two, uh, not only is this one new uh, to me, even though it's an, a used mower, but it's the newest out of these two. And uh, pretty much, just to be honest with y'all, um, not up until this one, I'm just not a big fan of uh, MTD, which is what this is. It's a Yard Machines uh, MTD by MTD uh, mower. And the reason why that I've not been a big fan of these up until this one is because they're the uh, poor man's mower. And uh, not to say that I'm not a poor man, but what I'm saying is, is they made, they, they, they went the cheapest they could and took all the short, shortcuts they could on these machines to make them as cheap as they could for the poor man. And uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I have some other videos. What it was was uh, uh, I worked on a Troy built that's also built by MTD. Um, it's funny because MTD makes a a lot of different uh, brands or a lot of, a lot of different brands tag their tag MTD stuff as their own, um, such as this Bolins right here. Bolins is actually MTD, and so uh, anyway. Uh, what it is, is, uh, they just make them cheap. Um, and that Troy built that I was working on, the videos I was made, that I made on that, uh, it, uh, had a couple different issues. Uh, but the biggest issue that could be aimed at MTD is the, uh, I guess shift on the fly system and the, you know, it's not really the transmission itself, the rear axle, but the uh, shift on the fly. What it is, is these work on a, uh, a variable speed pulley, uh, much like a torque converter on a go-kart. That's uh, what these work on. And on that Troy belt that I worked on, the uh, pulley just uh, self-destructed. And uh, no rhyme, no reason. Just the pulley itself went uh, broke, and so you couldn't drive it. And so, uh, <clears throat> and like I say, everybody I talk to say that these are not the machines to have. Uh, but uh, as, as with all the trash talking I've done and everything else, uh, and I said, well, I don't know if I said an introductory video. But the reason why I hung on to this machine, why I hung on to this riding mower, is uh, 
right there. I don't know if you can read that, but it says 46 inch triple blade. And it also, not just that, but for as far as I know on MTD mowers, whatever brand it is, um, the decks that are smaller than these are really, really cheap. But this 46 inch is made out of some very, very thick steel. Uh, they took some time with this. They, uh, this, this deck is very, very strong and, uh, very well crafted. It's a very quality crafted deck. And, uh, uh, so that is the reason why I decided to hang on to it. Not just because of the quality, but again, like I said, 46 inch, that is... The uh, Craftsman LT1000 there is a 42 inch and uh, I live out here in the country and I have just under an acre and a half that I have to stay on top of and so four inches doesn't sound like much but it does come in handy when you're mowing just under an acre and a half and so uh, <clears throat> and also uh, you know this had the awesome price of free uh, the reason why it was free is because the engine in it ha was having issues. Uh, <clears throat> I talked a little bit about it in the uh, introductory video. And uh, so I wanted to cover that a little bit more and talk about the issues I ran up against. Here's, uh, uh, I guess, my boneyard of parts from uh, fixing it. And so... Uh, we'll talk about that. So, so originally when I got this motor, it would not start. I had to adjust the valves all the way in with no lash. And when I started it, it would shoot oil out of it. And, uh, but I realized then that it would start. And also while it was running, I made sure that it would uh, move forward and move, move uh, backwards, forward and backwards, drive in reverse. So <clears throat> as long as I knew it was starting, it would drive, then it was worth messing with. If it didn't do those two things, then yeah, I was going to figure out something else. So, uh, so uh, what I did was, is I went over to a buddy of mine's got a mower salvage yard and I bought a uh, 13 horsepower. And uh, this doesn't look like it now, but that block right there is the 13 horse. And um, what had happened was, this is the flywheel here off of it, you can see these magnets came off of it and uh, lodged itself up underneath where it was hitting the uh, stator. <coughs> hit the uh, stator and it broke that post off but it also would not let the uh, the flywheel spin and so uh, so I had to figure something else out I just did the motor swap I pulled this one off and put that 13 horse on there and then it locked up or did its thing with the with the flywheel magnets and uh, so I was a little bit lost for words. So I called my buddy that I got that 13 horse from and he said, well, why don't you see about if you could just fix the original motor with the parts from that one? And I didn't think it was possible, but uh, so, but I did. I, I uh, took that engine and uh, tore it down. And what I found inside of there was, was uh, let's see, one of the push rods was bent. Uh, one of the cab cam lobes was uh, no longer had a lobe. It was almost round. And one of the tappets was really scarred up, the one that was on that round lobe. Um, basically, it was signs of low oil. Somebody had been driving this thing on low oil. <coughs> and um, uh, just really neglected the motor. And... Uh, so I uh, 
I tore apart the 13 horse and uh, uh, the only thing is though with these Intec uh, 540 cc's which I don't know if you guys are familiar with them or not but they come with a uh, pressurized oiling system and uh, that being said they're supposed to have a spin on oil filter uh, right there right underneath the carburetor and you see that this one no longer has a spin on uh, spin on oil filter right there there is the crankcase you see the oil uh, the oil the yellow oil filter right there uh, that is the original bottom part or crankcase of that 540 cc the crankcase or the bottom part of the motor on that's on there now is the one that came off of the uh, 13 horse uh, the reason why I had to do that is because the pressurized oiling system is driven off the cam well as I said the original cam was was all messed up in this and so I had to pull the cam out of the 13 horse and put it in here the only issue with the 13 horse compared to this one was the 13 horse did not have a pressurized oiling system so it did not have the part on the end of the cam to drive the oil pump so it also would not fit into that crankcase so I had to take the, the crankcase off the 13 horse and also the cam and put it on this motor and then also the tappets out of the 13 horse because it like I said it damaged one of the tappets <clears throat> and so and then uh, I had to get um, Yeah, like I said, oh, I don't know if I said this or not, but it bent the uh, push rods. One push rod is steel, one push rod is aluminum, and it bent the aluminum push rod. And uh, so I had to get some push rods. Well, I watched a video on YouTube, and uh, a guy's name is Terrell, and he was saying you can put two steel push rods in these. And so I took uh, the steel push rod from the new set and then also the original push rod. So now this engine has two steel push rods in it and not uh not an aluminum push rod uh <clears throat> anyway uh so uh it also had a um, blowed out muffler this is the muffler the original muffler that came on it and you can see it all blowed out right there this part here is uh what the muffler was encased in right in that big hole right there and uh, that all took up that big space right there and uh, anyway um, what it was was I had some mufflers already and uh, so let me come over here and show you all the, the muffler I put on here and there's the new muffler and uh, so obviously it wasn't going to work with that box that that like I said that metal part that went around that muffler and so I just left it off and uh, not to mention the fact that that box would have deflected the exhaust from being able to blow out and so so now it's just uh, that's the muffler and it just blows right out through that big hole so uh, Anyway, uh, <clears throat> so uh, the other modification that I had to do to this motor was was it originally came with a uh, Nikki carburetor. Let me see if it's over here. Yep, there it is. <clears throat> originally came with the. Uh, the let me see if I can see it yeah Nikki carburetor don't know if y'all can see that and uh, never been a big fan of Nikki carburetors so <clears throat> swapped it out for that uh, Walbro that's on there now and uh, starts and runs a whole lot better uh, also had to swap out this mower has a total of four belts. Uh, 
had to swap out uh, the CTSV belt uh, that goes from the uh, variable speed pulley to the transaxle. It's just a small belt. And then also had to replace the belt that goes from the engine to the deck, to the cutting deck. And uh, <clears throat> now you say four belts. Well, it's got another belt that goes from the engine to the rear end. And it's also got a belt that just drives all of the pulleys on the uh, uh, the mower deck itself. And so, uh, so anyway, then another thing I had to do was, was because uh, this mower came with all of the safety, all the idiot switches. Uh, you know, you can't start it while you're uh, not setting on it and also uh, in park or with the park brake on. Well, this one was even worse. With the park brake on it, or with the park brake on and in neutral, you still couldn't start it because you still had to push the pedal down. And so I wasn't having that. And uh, also you could not mow in reverse on this. And so, uh, <clears throat> let me see if I can show you guys. <clears throat> As far as being able to mow in reverse, let's see if I can get a good angle here. There you go. This wire right here, uh, it plugs in. It plugs in. Uh, yeah, right here. And uh, what that does is it grounds out. When you put it in reverse and the mower deck is engaged, it grounds out and kills your mower. So all you got to do is unplug that wire and just leave it unplugged. And you don't have to worry about that. You ask how I figured that out? Well, all I did was, was I followed the, the shifter. I followed the shift rod all the way down and I saw where, see if I can get a good angle on it, you see the shift rod, you follow it all the way down, let's see if I can get a good angle and show y'all, well, I might not be able to get it, let's see, turn it here. There we go. You see that, how that moves right there? And I put it in reverse, and how it's hitting that tab? That tab is what grounds it out. When you disconnect that wire, then it doesn't ground it out. Then as far as being able to start it, uh, what it is is right here on this pedal, right underneath here, is let's see if I can get a good shot on it. Sorry guys, I'm doing the best I can with my phone. I'm trying to show you all this. Uh, this is the switch here. Uh, it's got a little post that comes out right there and uh, and it hits this part right here on the pedal. Oh dang it. I'm trying to do my best. See how it moves? Well, that little post right here would go in that switch every time you push the pedal down so you could start it. Well, I just took the switch off, obviously, and uh, put a wood screw in there and holds that switch shut all the time. So that's how I fixed that. <laughs> so uh, I guess the only other modification worth mentioning is is yeah you see how there's no wires running to that fuel solenoid because the fuel solenoid has been modified and uh, when I modified it I installed one of these so and that's how I kill my uh, riding mowers I don't shut it off with the key I shut it off with the fuel valve so 
I think I've covered all of the things I've done to it, guys. Like I said, I tried to make a feature, or tried to feature everything that I've done to this particular machine. And I uh, believe I've covered all of it. So I'm going to end this video with uh, starting it up and, and uh, letting you all hear it run. And then uh, uh, I'm going to close out this video. So uh, any questions, comments, uh, you know, like, subscribe, you know, uh, hit me up, let me know, and uh, I can answer some questions, especially if you have questions about the safety switches or whatever. It does still have the uh, seat switch. In other words, when the deck is engaged and you're sitting on it and you jump off, it'll, it'll die with the deck engaged and, and all of that. So it does still have that, but as far as being able to mow in reverse, and then also, like I said, I don't have to push the pedal. So, uh, so anyway, uh, let's see if we can get her fired up here and uh, in this video. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, uh, God bless.